relax in here. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember that you guys should subscribe, ring the notification bell, and follow me over on social media. But if you want to support us directly, you guys should become patrons over on Patreon. Uh, so today I want to talk about Lila, which is like something that nobody ever wants to say. But uh, in the Time Tagger episode, there was a very interesting part which got a lot of people thinking about Lila. Uh, and so I want to talk about that theory that someday Lila is going to be Hawk Moth, that she will get the butterfly miraculous, which I think is very interesting. And so as you guys know, or maybe you don't know, but you guys should know because it wasn't Time Tagger, so you guys should go watch Time Tagger first because spoilers, I guess. So basically, Time Tagger does say, I told you I was sent by the Hawk Moth of the future. I never said the Hawk Moth from the future was you. And so that's very interesting because... That's like, you know, a little, little twisty twist that they put in that episode. And, you know, Gabriel goes and sits down and he's all sad. And so, you know, he brings up two good points, or one good point, and then Natalie brings up the other good point, right? And the points are basically, you know, if he isn't Hawk Moth anymore, that only means one of two things. It means that he either failed, which is what Hawk Moth says, right? That's what Gabriel says. Or he succeeded, and so he, you know, stopped being Hawk Moth and didn't give a shit, right? And so Natalie actually says something interesting to Adrian, which I think is interesting. They both basically say in this episode, like, the future is not set in stone. And I think this is an interesting point, because last episode, like, if you guys watched my reaction to last episode, which you guys should, like, I was just trying to wrap my head around the paradox of, like, Alex is miraculous and the time travel, but here's what I think, okay? And you guys are going to hear me talk about this a couple times because I've talked about this before. I've actually mentioned this in a separate video where I did a theory on how Adrian... Oh, what did I say? I guess I said that he'll die. I guess I'll say that accidentally he'll die. I talked about that, but basically that was in a different video. The easiest explanation I can think of, right, for what's going on now is that there are multiple timelines. And I think that this explanation is really good for a show like Miraculous just because, like... Think about, I guess, you know, it's popular in superhero and sort of comic book stuff, right? You know, like, if you think of, like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe or even the comic books where there are multiple timelines and multiple universes, even Spider-Man, you know, has... I know for a fact that Spider-Man comics do that, uh, and that's basically the whole plot of, like, Into the Spider-Verse is that there are multiple timelines, and in each timeline there's a different Spider-Man or Spider-Woman or spider <laughs> anyway, I think that it would be cool if Miraculous being a superhero show, right, takes inspiration from that. Because there's so much they could do with multiple universes. And that just makes me happy. Like, the thought, right? And again, I've discussed that idea, like, before. Um, and I don't know what ending the show will have, if that makes sense. It could get a lot more interesting uh, to be able to see, like, the universe, though, that Hawk Moth creates. Right? Because, you know to see what happens to Paris and whatever when he actually gets what he wants. Because I think that the timeline could later be corrected by Ladybug and Cat Noir, but that means that a timeline would exist where Hawk Moth wins, and what does that look like? That's very interesting. Because I mentioned this again in that theory video I had, but that could give Adrian a very strong moral conflict. Like, does he want to live in the universe where his family is back together, but something equally bad has happened, right? Because there's a price to pay for getting the wish. So I think in that video I had two theories. I had the theory that, like, Adrian's mom would come back and she would be healthy, but because it's equivalent exchange sort of thing, like, that's how the miraculous seemed to work. If Emily is better, that means somebody else gets sick, and maybe it's Marinette's parents. That's um, the theory that I had, and that's Adrian's moral conflict. He gets his family back together, but now he's sort of made Marinette suffer inadvertently because you know it's sort of that equivalent exchange or maybe something even worse happens to Paris who knows because there is a price for getting the wish uh so that was my theory is that it could either be equivalent exchange to something else or you know Hawk Moth gets back Emily or um I guess her yeah I guess her name is Emily or I don't think it's Emile because that's a that's a boy's name it's just spelt in Fran French and so I always have trouble but anyway my point is is that you know it's either something equally bad happens outside of, of things, and so Adrian's okay, or Adrian is the one who disappears, and that's the price, right? And so I think that would be interesting. Like, would he go back and defeat Hawk Moth? Like, would he go back in time and defeat Hawk, Hawk Moth if it means that he loses his mom forever, maybe? And to me, that's a pretty interesting moral conflict that the show could have in the future, something that can only really be achieved 
with multiple timelines, right? And it doesn't even have to be like, oh, Hawk Moth wins in the show and they go back in time and redo it. It's more like Adrian somehow maybe could even see the multiple timelines and like, you know, through something, I don't know, through a miraculous or through something happens and he's able to sort of, you know, see and explore that sort of thing. And that would be interesting. And so we'll come back to that later, I guess, right? Uh, but this is, that was important for the basis of this whole theory about Lila. That's the only reason why I mentioned multiple timelines at the end. But anyway, right, at the end, Lila is the one who talks to Chris about Freestyle Clash or whatever, the rapping game, right? And so it seems like that time tagger was made around the game because he kind of looks like rapper-ish. I don't know, like, how he's dressed. It's, it's hard to explain. But I think that this could have influenced, like, what Chris would get akumatized as in the future. Like, this interaction with Lila. And, you know, there's, I guess the question is, will Lila actually become Hawk Moth in the future? And here's what I'd like to propose. And this is, again, all based, sort of, again, on the multiple timelines thing and other things that I think about. But I would really think it would be interesting if Miraculous went the direction of Ben 10 or, like, impossible right where they start as children or high schoolers and then they grow up right with Kim possible they only like graduate I think and then the show is finished as far as I know but with Ben 10 as far as I remember they do become adults and so I would like it if Miraculous started in high school it shows them graduating and then they're adults and they're in college or they're you know in Adrian's case he's modeling like whatever they decide to do as adults like it would be sort of interesting if Marinette you know they graduated they have prom all that stuff and so she started working like as a fashion intern for Gabriel and that would have her around Adrian all the time and all that stuff you know like just to see them sort of grow up I think that that would be interesting right but are they going to and that's what I'm saying is like I'm not sure how long Miraculous is going to go for and if it does continue to be popular it would only make sense to bring them into adulthood to age them up right like I think that if the show still makes the money Disney and whoever like wouldn't mind milking it to the you know to the longest extreme and I think having everyone grow up at the end like that would be very you know almost fitting I guess because that means that the kids that watched it are also growing up right like the kids who started watching it in high school maybe at the end of high school now like I started watching Miraculous and I graduated sort of thing you know or the kids that are in elementary school and watching it they'll go into high school and then they'll be adults you know for however long the show uh sort of runs for and so it's just sort of that struggle of is the show going to end with the defeat of Hawk Moth and Natalie is the show going to end maybe like somehow else and it's going to be uh you know hawk moth and his wife that are the ones that like are the new super villains right um and all that stuff and so this is i guess where the idea of multiple timelines does come in the future isn't set in stone right and so you know and that sort of thing has been repeated in that episode and so it means that the future timeline with adult ladybug and adult cat noir fighting the future hawk moth may not be a timeline that the show will ever show if that makes sense that may never be a timeline that the show ever hits because the show may very well end after they're done high school they may ne never even be adults like they may defeat hawk moth and then no one's using the miraculouses for evil anymore something like that and that would make sort of two separate timelines um because like let's ignore i guess hawk moth actually winning or losing because that's not important the easiest way to explain this is there's a hawk moth where gabriel stopped being hawk moth whether he won or whether he was defeated the miraculous are recovered and given to master Fu, and nobody ever uses them for evil again right but there's another timeline where gabriel stops being hawk moth either again because he won or because he lost or because maybe lila just straight up like jacked it from him or something right and somehow the Miraculous got to Lila. The Miraculouses were never recovered. They never got uh, to Master Fu sort of thing. And people kept using them for evil. And so this would create two separate timelines, right? Like the timeline where adult Alex came from, where Lila is Hawk Moth. And then the show's ending, maybe a separate timeline where the Miraculouses are recovered, happy ending, fun times sort of thing. And there will be no new Hawk Moth, right? And so... That's sort of the complicated part. If the show does continue to a point where everyone is an adult, I would say certainly. Um, it would be almost definitive by the foreshadowing in this episode that Lila 
is the Hothma from the future. And so that's basically my conclusion is that if there are multiple timelines, right, this means at least in one universe, Lila is Hawkmoth, and so everybody who enjoys this theory can rejoice, right, because if multiple timelines exist, basically everything is canon, but the question is, right, you know, what timeline will they show in the show proper? Will we even get to the point where Lila becomes an adult, where all of them become adults? Because again, like I said, the show could very well end before that and we will never see that part and that would be unfortunate. To be honest, in my opinion, I think that they should go all the way to adults. Why not? Like, why not? Because, you know, Ben 10 did it, okay? That's not the best example. It's the only one I can think of, but Ben 10 did it and everybody survived, you know? It was cool, I guess. Uh, and so, you know, I don't know. It just, I want this to give me the Kim Possible vibes, but go even further than Kim Possible, to go into them in adulthood. At least for like one or two seasons, I think it would be nice because they are supposed to be growing up, but I don't know how much time has actually passed. Like, I want to see them go to prom and like get a little older. Like, they would grow up with the audience. I think that's just so cool. So that's basically my answer, is that as for seeing Lila become Hawk Moth on screen, it's too early to tell. We just really need to see, like, this depends on the studios, you know, the creator, if the creator actually has a desire to see them through all the way to adulthood, right? And so, really, it's anybody's guess. We'll just have to see. But, yeah, in conclusion, there's basically only two answers. is that they stop the show when Gabriel's defeated, right? Or they continue the show to the point where they get to Lila being Hawk Moth. Right, those are really the only two. It's it's sort of a 50-50 chance if that makes anyone feel better, but yeah. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Remember, again, to subscribe uh, to me over on social media if you guys are interested. Uh, in Patreon, our outro has more information about how you can sign up and all that. So yeah, I will see you guys later. Bye. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I'm just going to take a moment here to thank our patrons over on Patreon and our Discord server moderators who are a part of our community. Cal Pals at the $2 tier get exclusive access to our Cal Pals community Discord server, exclusive access to our video scripts, exclusive access to schedules, updates, polls, the live podcast, and the chat to ask questions for our monthly Q&A. They also get the name feature at the end of every video. There's also a special reward. At the beginning of every month, Cal Pals will be able to vote for me to watch the first episode of whatever anime or cartoon that they want. This encourages us to watch some cool new anime that you guys may want us to see, or maybe you just want us to watch like the first episode of some crazy like quirky anime where we never like react to the entire series, but you guys are just like, wow, this is like so weird and so crazy. I just want to see them react to the first episode. The Cal Terpillars at the $5 tier have access to all previous rewards and they also have access to our videos a week in advance early access so that's a week early before they are released onto YouTube. And there's also a special reward. Patrons at this tier will get access to an exclusive reaction series that'll be posted for patrons and patrons only. It will not be public to YouTube until after it's finished and another Patreon exclusive series has started. So basically the patrons get their own anime reaction series of whatever anime that they vote for and it's just for them. It won't be on YouTube so it's totally for patrons and to the benefit of all of the wonderful patrons who support us at this tier. The Cal Peons have access to all previous rewards, exclusive access to our videos as soon as they're ready, and so in the past this has been, say, you know, 14 days, so two weeks in advance, sometimes 30 days in advance, so like a month early, sometimes they've been 60 days in advance, so imagine getting to watch the videos on our channel basically two months before anyone else, because it does happen depending on how much Hunter and I pre-record in advance. They also have the ability to invite one of their friends into the Discord server without them needing to pledge on Patreon, so if you have a friend that loves the cartoons that we react to, or the anime we react to, or, you know, the video games, cartoons, and anime we do discussion videos on, you can bring them as a part of our community without them having to need to pledge. But they also get a special reward, and this is three video tickets. So these can be used to request videos. One ticket equals 10 minutes, so if you guys have seen, we've done a lot of shipping video requests, we've done a lot of reaction requests that say pay Patreon video in the brackets, and so those are videos that patrons have used their tickets on to get us to do for them.
the Calzones have access to the Calzone, which is a special reward for this tier that I'll explain in a moment, but they get access to all previous rewards. They get six video tickets, which would be long enough for, say, two anime episode reactions, or six 10 minute videos, so six shipping videos, for example, six discussion videos if they're all 10 minutes long. And they also have the ability to invite two of their friends into the Discord server without them needing to pledge on Patreon. And they will also get access to the VIP chat since they are a VIP. And so that is where the Calzone comes in. The Calzone is our VIP text chat on Discord. We also do a monthly VIP only voice call. Let's just take a small break here to thank the moderators on my Discord server. So they obviously help out a lot with moderating and setting up events for the community and just being, you know, generally good parts of the community to have around. So I just wanted to include this little bit in between all the patrons to just sort of thank them for their work, thank them for helping out in my community and all that sort of stuff. The Caltalists have access to all previous rewards. 15 video tickets, the ability to add me as a friend on Discord so I can go ahead and make a private group chat uh, with them so they have direct private access to us, the ability to invite three of their friends onto the Discord server without them needing to pledge on Patreon, those friends will also get access to the VIP chat as well, and their special reward is auto-hosting their live streams on my Twitch and being able to promote their videos in the Discord server. The Caltastrophes have access to all previous rewards, 30 video tickets, access to my private Instagram, Snapchat, and a private group with just Hunter and I. They have the ability to invite five of their friends into the Discord server without them needing to pledge over on Patreon, and those friends will also get access to the VIP chat since at the $100 tier you are of course a VIP. For the special reward, we would make videos and collaborate together so we could write the script together, record the lines together, edit and post the video on my channel. They would be sort of credited and all of their links would be posted in the description and all of that normal stuff that you would expect from a collaboration like this. But obviously it is a very special project uh, because it would be, uh, you know, from a patron, it would be sort of a community project and that's why it's one of my favorite special rewards. So again, one big thank you to all the patrons over on Patreon who help keep the channel alive. I love you guys and I will see you in the next video. Bye.